Today, we're going to talk about Luminar Neo and the portrait background replacement tool again. I had a few comments and questions about the type of photographs that I was using. Basically, the demonstrations I showed had a model or subject on a plain background. And people were asking, hey, why don't you do this on somebody on a real background? It doesn't make any sense. And honestly, it does make a lot of sense. What we're talking about is compositing photos. And you need very specific concerns when you're going to take a person from one photograph and put them on another background. But it's easier to show that than it is to explain it. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a photographer just like you. I enjoy doing composite photography every now and then. I think it's a wonderful way to create something that is unique. And Luminar Neo's portrait background replacement is a step towards that direction. But there are concerns, no matter which tool you're going to use, as to what subject you select, what background they have, and what background you're going to put them on. You've got to be looking at the lighting. In other words, is the light coming from the same direction? It won't make sense to the viewer's eye if the background has light coming from the left and the subject has light coming from the right. If the color and quality of the light doesn't match, one is soft, one is harsh, one has orange you know, sunset light, and the other one is bright sunlight. All of these things matter, and you have to take that in mind when you're doing a composite. The other thing that you have to keep in mind is that your subject needs to be sharp and contrasty. If you have a subject that is somewhat not fully in focus, like if you have a shallow depth of field and then you want to cut them out and put them onto another background, it's just not going to work. So we're going to take a look at some of those issues in the, this little video. All right, I'm going to take a couple of photos. Let's start with this one over here. There's a couple right here. And they're sitting on stairs. And let me open this up so we can see a little better. And you can see that they're, they are backlit. There's sunlight that's coming up on her hair and on his hair. If you notice the color tone for the background and their skin matches, the lighting matches. Basically, this was a photograph that was taken on a location. There is a little defocus up here on her fingernails. I don't think that's the concern. The real concern that you're looking at is on the edges, do you have some kind of focus problem? In other words, from their foreground backwards and on the edges, is there any defocus or soft spots on there? And this one doesn't seem to be the case. So let's do a quick test here. We're going to go into masking, portrait background, and click on remove. Okay, so it's done its work. And if you might see over here on her hair, this is not quite clear, even a little bit on his. There's a little bit on the edge over here. And that may or may not be a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to take another background. And I've got this canvas background that I use a lot of times. We can try it and maybe with different colors. So all I do is I bring the opacity up to 100%. And I put this behind them. And honestly, that's not a terrible look because you can see, yeah, that's a little strange up here. But you can see her hair masks in very well. The edges mask in very well. And I would probably want to clean that up a little bit. But overall, I think this is a good job from Luminar Neo doing its mask replacement. The problem happens when you want to clean things up. Let's say up here I want to change that so it is background. What we'll do is we'll click on our portrait subject. We'll go over to masking. And for some reason, when you click on portrait background, it wants you to remove it again. Don't know why, but you have to do that in order to get your refinements brush. So what we're looking at here are the three different areas. So you have your transition, your object, which is definitely stuff that you want included in your photograph. No questions asked. Anything in this little orange area should be in your photo. And you may notice that her shoulder over here is kind of showing a little bit transparent. So we want to make sure that's in there. So I'm going to brush that in. Same thing with her fingers. And the edges, we let the transition tool do its work. The background is blue. That's anything you definitely don't want included in your mask. So what we're going to do is we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to come over here and see if we can't just wipe out that area. And this is either going to work or it won't work. I found that the background does exactly what you tell you. The object does exactly what you tell you to do. And the transition does whatever it pleases. So let's take a look and see how that worked out. And it wiped that out. I would probably have to come back over here to this spot and change that to be background. And again, of course, I have to remove the background. 
come over here and let's say background, I'm gonna make my brush just a little bit smaller. And let's say this area was looking a little funky. I just brush that out, wait a moment for that to come in. And now we're gonna go back and that area is gone. But it's kind of a little bit fuzzy and murky here from what we did, but you can see I kind of cut off the top of her head with one of those. That's, that's just bad technique on my part. That's not a problem with the tool. But there are times when the tool has a problem. So let's get rid of this. We'll get rid of our background and go pick another one. Now, one of the ones I've tried that gives a bit of a problem is this photograph over here. So let's click on edit. These people, you know, it's a nice couple. They're very clearly lit. The problems come with things that are already in the photograph. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see a bit more clearly. So you see her blouse and the cloud behind it. That makes it very difficult for the tool to find an edge. And when I've done this video before, or when I've done this uh, particular portrait before, this gets a bit murky. Another problem I have is look over here at the top of her head. I thought I had a halo from the tool. It's actually a headband that she's wearing. So it's not very clear that it's a headband on the background that I previously put it on. So you need to probably zoom in and look at all of your edges to make sure you understand what you're getting. And then we'll see if there are any problems with his hairline or anything like that. So let's go ahead over to our layer properties. We'll click on masking and do portrait background, remove. And again, it looks for the most part, like we've got a nice clean cut over here. I think that's still a little bit soft, but again, let me get a background and I'll do this little one and move this down. And the reason I'm using this one is because it kind of, because it's a different color, it really shows off where the weaknesses are. So as I said, over here on her blouse, it didn't really do a very good job on the transition. I, the hairband over here, I used to think was a halo. Now I realize that it's not, but we do have a halo on his ear. It's a little soft on her elbow and there's a little bit of a halo on his head. So what do we do? Using the tool as it's intended to be using, we're going to click on this subject. We're going to go to masking, portrait background, remove, and we're going to use our refinements brush. And you see right here, there's a spot where we definitely want this to be our objects. We're going to paint that in. I don't think that was a problem in the resulting photo that we got, but we did have a problem with his ear and on his hair. And this is where the transition should be able to help us out. And this is in the transition area. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that over here and also kind of on top of his hair. So I'm covering the edges in both sides to show that as a transition area, that's where the tool does its magic. So for the most part, I'm pleased with, how this looks and I'm just going to hit, go ahead and go back. And then you see up here where I painted, it's kind of murky. It definitely brought in something over here on his ear. And that's what I was hoping for. We don't have that white spot that we did before, but the transition tool, when I paint over it, just doesn't do a very good job here blending in afterwards. Now we could try this with a different background. Let me bring this up. And let's put them on top of that. And you see, we still have that same problem. Now, the only thing I can really do about that is to go in with the background brush and try to paint that very, very carefully over there. But his ear, you can see there's a little bit of blue from the sky that's bleeding through this. You can see over here on her shoulder. And my problem is not that the object tool or brush doesn't work or the background brush doesn't work. Those work great. It is the transition brush that doesn't really give you any fine control. You brush it and it's either there or it's not there. And then it calculates. There's no, I'd say there's no control other than the size of your brush. There's no density. There's no, Hey, be careful here. There's no choose. This is hair or this is an ear or anything like that. And to me, that is the great weakness of this particular tool doing things with that transition brush. When it makes a good selection, it does very well. When there's complications, it doesn't do very well. And even something as simple as this has some complications with it. I'm going to show you one that's really, really atrocious. Let's go back over the catalog. And that's this next photo. 
And this is one that has all the things I was warning you about. You can see that her shoulder is out of focus. There's soft background. There's lighting behind her. Her ear is out of focus. There's hair over here, and the hair is mixing in with you know these lights that are also out of focus. And this is the kind of thing that's shot on scene. You're not just going to pick her up in any tool and very clearly and cleanly put her on another background because of this soft focus and because these lights, when they shine through, even though they're out of focus, the light kind of blends in on our hair. So let me give you an example and just show you what a mess this is going to become. So let's remove the background. And there you can see it. There's a lot of green from the background. There's some over here. There's green there. You can see on her shoulder, there's a highlight of green. This isn't going to get fixed with this tool. I can come down here to this refinements brush and I can, you know, paint in my object all I want. But there are areas that should be in transition and some that shouldn't. Like, for example, down here, this hair and this green. I'm just not going to get that fixed because I have to rely upon the tool. There is nothing that I can do. I mean, I can, so I can't check or uncheck this box down here on any of these buttons. All I can do is change the size of my brush. And then when I'm done with that, I go back over here. I still have the same problem. So soft areas are very difficult to mask out. And that's exactly what's happening on a photograph like this, where there's a lot of soft on her and also soft focus on the background. That is why a lot of the demonstrations that people are talking about are showing people on a neutral background. Particularly, you want something on a gray background because that's much easier to show contrast. A white background is surprisingly sometimes difficult to work with. So let me give you an example. All right, so these folks are on a gray background. There ought to be pretty easy to cut out. Even though he's wearing a gray shirt, it's a different kind of gray than you can see on the edge over there. So I'll come over to our layer properties. We'll go to masking and portrait background. Remove. And that looks like it's a pretty clean cut. Let's find out for sure. We'll do a couple of different backgrounds. So this one. Yeah, they cut out actually very nicely over here. I'm not, I'm doing a quick look. I mean, I haven't scanned through this yet. It looks like it's a nice clean cut. Let's try this with a different background. And again, it looks like a nice clean cut. You notice that there's differences in lighting and that's okay. This looks, to me, this looks fake because the lighting on them does not match the lighting on the background. And that's just, you know, the way it is. That's a completely separate issue. We'll probably cover that in a, uh, a different video, but you need to look at the lighting. You need to look at the color and the background as well as the kind of result that you get. So we're going to get rid of this. And I want to show you one other result, and it's this one. This one is unique to me because if anything, something as high contrast as this I would expect to work very well. Even though it's a white background, I would expect the high contrast between her hair and her skin to work very well, and it doesn't. So let me show you what I'm talking about. But I also want to show you a way around that for a photograph like this where it just doesn't work very well. So we've removed that up here at the top. You notice how we go from the checkerboard to this is white in this area over here, and then checkerboard. In other words, it did not mask that out. And I'm going to show you that with... This And if you get something where the aspect ratio doesn't work, you can just come over here to image mapping, click fill. We'll do this 100% and we'll put her on top. And this is a horrible job as far as the masking. You can see all these little white spots over here. You can see where it doesn't mask quite there. And this on top really is just awful. I mean, it's no way around it. It's just a really bad job. But we can fix that. And we can do it in a way that wasn't possible in Luminar Neo before, but now that we actually have some of our blend modes, we can do actually a very nice job. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring her down. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to bring this all the way up and I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. And you notice that she shows up and the masking around the edges is pretty good. Now, if you're going to do this, depending on the background that you have, 
there are three different blend modes that may work. Multiply works on this photo. Overlay is another one, and soft light. And you're gonna to have to try and experiment. It depends upon the photograph that you have for your background. In this case, we're gonna go with multiply. And then all I'm gonna do is come over to masking, get a brush, and erase. And let's just start off over here with her eyes. And you notice her skin tone comes back in, but we still have good masking around the edges. And this is probably something that's easier done with a tablet. I'm using a mouse right now, but all you wanna do is erase or remove that background from her hair and her skin tone. And I might do a sloppy job here, but you can see we've actually got a very good mask around the edges. Her skin tone is working. And if you screw up and go over, all you have to do is change your brush from erase to paint to kind of clean up an area. And this is not my best work because I don't do my best work with a mouse. <laughs> but that is another way to do compositing in a tricky area with a background like this where multiply works. And honestly, I'm much happier than with this than I was with anything I did with the portrait background replacement. So it depends on your subject, what's behind them, how sharp or contrasty they are, and what background you're going to put them on. There are a lot of details that go into compositing. So the idea of that a lot of people who are demonstrating this were using photographs that were on a clean background. The reason why is because that's how you do compositing. If you ever look at someone like Joel Grimes, who does, I think, a wonderful job. He goes off and shoots HDR background someplace, and then he shoots his subjects in his studio on a light gray background and then composites them together. They look very good. They fit in there. But that's the way it works is you shoot them on a controlled environment and then put them in front of the environment that maybe it wasn't practical to do a live shoot with the people right there. So I hope this gives you some ideas of what Luminar Neo background uh, or the portrait background replacement can do and some places where it doesn't work so well. Quite honestly, I think that it will get better. And that's because most of the AI tools that I've seen with Luminar products start off okay, and then they improve as they train it more and more. I'm hoping that there'll be further updates. Right now, as far as compositing, I would probably use this approach where I'm doing a background and putting a blend mode on and painting in what I want rather than some of the others. But I wanted to show you a couple of techniques. I wanted to show you why some photos work and why some photos don't work. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. If you like this video, please go ahead, click the like button. That tells the YouTube overlords that it's doing well. People like it, they will share it with more folks and it kind of helps the channel grow. Again, my name is William Beam. You can find me at williambeam.com. There are links in the description below for discounts on a number of products. And I'll see you again in the next video.